Hello, how you doing? <laughs> As you can tell by the title here, I will be discussing, just going to throw out a few quick tips on how to have flawless foundation. Okay, so stay tuned. In the meantime, between time, you know what I'm going to ask you to do. Now, you all know, go ahead, hit the subscribe button over there, that little red sub subscribe that little red rectangle over there in the right hand corner below this video go ahead and hit me up with that hit me with your best shot subscribe away Woo! you know what i'm gonna say and after you hit the subscribe button there will be a little bell pop up go ahead and hit that while you're at it Go ahead. That what that does is that will alert you whenever I upload a video, you'll be automatically up, uh, alerted. Okay. Then the next thing I need for y'all do, go ahead and give me a thumbs up because you know you're gonna like this video anyway. All my videos are good, so go ahead. I don't even need to tell you all that. Just go ahead and hit the like. And those of you who have not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And then feel free to leave a comment down below. Okay. Now, what we're discussing today, I'm just going to throw out a few quick tips how to have flawless foundation, flawless makeup look. Number one, and it's 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 a doozy. It's one I don't even mm, I have I struggle with myself. It's it's the easiest, but yet the hardest. Okay, and that is the first key to having a flawless foundation is your skin. The main key to having great, awesome looking skin is your water intake. Mm -hmm. Yep, I said it. I sure did. I sure did. Water intake is the number one key to flawless face, foundation, hair, everything. Keeping your organs, your vital organs working properly. Now, you know they say eight glasses a day, which equals 80 ounces. However, the best way to do it is to go ahead and this is an easy way to now that's just the 80 ounces is just for your your key vital organs to keep them working properly. If you want to keep your skin and hair and nails and all that good jazz, then you need to drink a little bit more. All right. And the best way to figure out well, how much water do I need to drink? Take your body weight and divide it in half. So like me, my body weight is anywhere between 220 and 240. So that's 110 to 120 ounces of water. And after you divide your weight in half, that's how many ounces. However, if you're like 300 pounds or whatever, and you cut it in half, that's going to be more than a gallon. Do not drink more than a gallon, okay? Cut it at one gallon is going to be your limit. The reason why you do not want to go drink more than one gallon of water a day is because anything over a gallon is going to start messing with your electrolytes, okay? You don't want that. You want to drink more than the 80 ounces because like I just stated before, that 80 ounces is just to help your vital organs, you know, your kidney and spleen and liver, all of that working properly. If you want extra, because whenever you drink water, and I know, oh, I drink water all day. That's something else I was, I was guilty of all the time. I drink When somebody tell me to drink water, drink your water, drink your water. Oh, girl, I drink water all day. And I, girl, right. But actually, I was telling the truth. And you're telling the truth, too, when you tell me you drink water all day. However, drinking, sipping on that same 20-ounce bottle all day long is not the same. It does not equal a gallon. So come on, get real with yourself. Sipping on 20 ounces of water, that little 20-ounce bottle water bottle all day long does not equate to adequate water intake. Now, speaking of water intake, I'm when I say water, I mean plain water. Now, if you, oh, I don't like the taste of water. It's, it's bland. It's this, it's that. I agree with you. However, those little flavor packets, is filled. those things are filled with sugar, hidden sugar, and sodium. Yes, yeah, sodium. I know they, they taste sweet, but they still have sodium. Read the back. Have you ever taken time out to read the back of those little packets, the information, the nutritional value? There is, there, that's because there is no nutritional value in those things. But if you just have to have something in your water to cut the bland taste, squeeze some fresh lemon in your water. Now, that brings me to something else. When I say fresh lemon, I'm talking fresh lemon that grows off the tree. I'm not talking about one of those little hard yellow plastic things that says real lemon juice. 
No. Now, if you're going camping or somewhere like that, you do not have access to fresh lemon, then all right. I'll let you slide. But fresh lemon is the key. Also, fresh lemon is also when you drink lemon water, not only is it um, does it make your water taste better, no sugar. Now, don't add any sweetener or sugar or anything like that. Just And don't put too much because if you squeeze too much fresh lemon juice, it's going to leave it's going to taste bitter and now you're back at square one not liking the taste so just squeeze just enough to cut the blandness okay now the other thing that's good for that lemon water is good for is high blood pressure if you have high blood pressure honey drinking that fresh lemon every day all day every day for several weeks will knock that blood pressure down i'm telling you Trust me, I know from experience. I know I've been there, okay? You knock that. And if you don't like lemon, any fresh fruit. Um, I like strawberries, uh, peaches, but fresh. Not the, not the canned stuff, not the frozen. Fresh fruit, okay? And what you can do, if you have a refrigerator or even not, you can cut up a few strawberries, fresh strawberries or apples or grapes that's something else cut up a few slice up a few little grapes in there and if i think britta sells one if i'm not mistaken they sell this thing and it has a core in the they sell this pitcher this water pitcher and it has a core you can put the fruit in that core and put the core in the pitcher and leave it in the refrigerator overnight or sit it out somewhere and the 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 water the fruit will infuse within the water okay so that'll help cut the taste and it'll help also natural sweetener now, the next thing to flawless fi uh, finished foundation is going to be um, proper skin care. Wash. I know ever cleanse your face. Everyone knows that. Yes, and you do it. However, you need to exfoliate. Exfoliate, exfoliate, exfoliate. Go ahead and hit them lips. Mm, pucker up, baby. Hit those lips while you're at it. Ex exfoliate your face and your lips. You, that's a must now once a week once every two weeks whatever you know you work with it whatever works with you after you exfoliate and cleanse and tone then a moisturizer get a moisturizer formulated for your skin condition if you have dry skin you're going to need a more moisturizing moisturizer if you have oily skin such as i do you're going to want something that's more mattifying or you don't want something that has a lot of alcohol because that's going to do even though it's drying is going to dry too much but just just ask around or do your research something formulated for your skin tone moisturize okay now we got the moisturize we have a clean face we've been drinking our water not that little 20 ounce but a real water okay like up to a gallon no more than a gallon of water now you're going to do a primer always prime your face you want to prime your face with um and again, something that is formulated for your skin tone. I mean, not your skin tone, but your skin condition. If you have dry skin, you want to go for a moisturizing primer. If you have oily skin, such as me, myself, then you want to go for a mattifying uh, primer. And once again, be real with yourself. Don't sit up there looking like, you know, you have a vat of Crisco on your face, like you can fry some fish. You ready for the Friday night fish fry and talking about, oh, I have dry skin. Um, no, you don't. All right, let's let's get real. Get real with ourselves. Let's keep it real. Keeping it real. Keeping it real. Keeping it real. Okay, let's keep it real. And be real with yourselves. So get a, a primer that is formulated for your skin condition. Okay, after you prime, now after you cleanse your face, let your face, and you moisturize, let your face sit for five or ten minutes or so. Then go ahead, after you moisturize, put your primer on. After you apply your primer, let that sit for five or ten minutes or so. The longer you let each layer sit before you go to the next layer or the next step, the better the application of your foundation will be. Now... Go ahead, after you got your primer on, you applied your primer, you let that sit for a few minutes, now you're ready for the next step, which is applying your foundation. Um, most dry skinned people, you're going to have a tendency to, to go towards the, the liquid foundations. Oily skin, we can do liquid, um, cream, cream to powder, whatever okay use a clean sponge clean brush i'm a brush person about the only time i use sponges is if i'm doing um a heavy cream foundation or if i'm blending um doing blending whether it's powder or applying powder face powder whatever okay now if you have oily skin there's something else you want to do let me back up a step after you apply your primer and you let that sit take a very 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 light dusting 
very light dusting of setting powder not finishing powder there is a difference i'll go over that in another video the difference between setting powders and and finishing powders okay but take a very translucent or whatever some setting powders do have a tint to them but dust take your brush and dust very ever so lightly with a setting powder okay let that sit for a minute then get a setting spray not a finishing spray but a setting spray and very lightly mist your face over the powder with the setting spray let that sit for a few minutes okay then you can apply your foundation and i know everybody's saying what applying liquid on top of powder only if you have oily skin and only if you want your foundation to be flawless and only if you want your foundation to last all day without rubbing on your collar and transferring. You go to hug someone, they're wearing a white shirt, you hug them, guess what? You just left your chin print on the back of their shirt. Don't do it. It's embarrassing to both you and them because they probably don't have enough, uh, you know, they, they're they too embarrassed to say, um, you just left some spots on my shirt oops my bad but so don't do that so if you have oily skin this is how you do it to ensure now after you put your foundation on you're going to let that sit for a minute or two then you're going to take and if you do concealer or color corrector whatever you do go ahead and do that then take your setting powder once again setting powder not finishing powder and with a damp sponge and go ahead and set your concealer go ahead and set that foundation okay and if you now what i do this is just me you don't have to do it after i put a very very dusting another dusting of setting powder on top of my foundation then i'll add my blush and all that you know i'll go ahead and do my blush bronzer highlighter whatever then after i do that i'll let that sit for a minute or two then i'll put another spray of setting spray let that sit for a minute or two then i'll go in and i'll use my finishing powder now you can do your finishing powder if this is uh this is what i do i have oily skin and this is what i do then you can add your finishing powder lipstick all that other stuff you're gonna already have done your eyes or or at least i do i try to do my eyes first before i do the rest of my face okay now after you do that and you let that sit you just spray it on another thing of uh, you put on your finishing powder now you're gonna do a setting spray go ahead and use your setting spray now let me back up a little bit especially for those with you um go ahead and do your setting spray i use ben nye's final seal for my for my setting spray it's like i call it the fort knox of setting sprays now after i do that i'm pretty much finished now let me go back a few steps for those with dry skin and some with depending on how oily your skin is you can do this as well now after you do your primer those of you with dry skin and if, if you don't want your your foundation or your 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 face to look too powdery or cakey what what's known as cake face now you can use your finishing spray if you don't want to use the setting spray you can use finishing spray whereas us oily skin people would be using setting spray dry skin people you can use a finishing spray and what and i mean oily skin because i do it as well i use finishing spray what that does when you find your face after because you're going to have several layers of powder and to keep from getting cake face you can use setting spray or finishing spray to help um diffuse help fuse and infuse all of your your different powders and, and foundations kind of fuse it together give you a more natural look not necessarily dewy you don't want to go overboard don't drench your face in in the spray but just lightly mist and that will help pull everything together melt everything together and also make it a little bit more flawless a lot more flawless actually and help your foundation and powder and blush and everything stay in place so those are some tips that you can do okay just just remember that that's how you can keep get a flawless face now let's go back over this number one water up to a gallon of water how do you figure out how much water you need to drink take your body weight and be real don't lie i'm i mean your real body weight okay not the weight that's on your driver's license not that way because my weight i think says lord 150 140 knots girl i haven't been a hundred something pounds in forever so use your real body weight not the weight that is listed on your driver's license your real true body weight cut it in half 
And that's how many ounces you need to drink because the 80 ounces of dread day that the, um, what is it, the FDA or whatever, that they recommend by the nutritional, uh, the USDA or whatever, the nutritional people, um, daily value, recommended nutritional value people, that 80 ounces, that's just for your vital organs, your your spleen, your kidney, your liver. That's just to keep all those organs, organs working properly. But if you want more, if you're trying to accomplish more things, you're going to have to drink more water. Okay? So with that being said, go ahead and drink, cut the body weight, your real body weight in half, and then that's how many ounces of water. If you're over 300 pounds, which means you will, you would... That would mean you would be drinking more than a gallon. Do not drink more than a gallon a day. A gallon a day is it. Now, the next controversy is, well, should I drink ice cold water or room temperature water? Me, personally, I drink the first two um, cups of water, glasses of water I drink when I first wake up. Those are room temperature water. And I drink it because I feel my body is warm. i just waking up. I don't want to throw my body in the shock. Okay, so I drink the warm temperature, and since it's all written, my body is warm, then drinking the warm water, it will help. And maybe this could be all psychological, I don't know, but I think it will, um, it will, my body will accept it. Oh, um, or I know that doesn't make sense, but anyway, it because your body's gonna accept it anyway. Now, ice cold water, you drink ice cold water throughout the day. My first two glasses and my last two glasses before I go to bed are room temperature. Now, in the middle of the day, during the day, I drink nothing but ice cold water. That's really about the only way I can drink water is ice cold. The colder, the better, baby. And ice cold water, the ice water helps. Uh, burns energy your body will burn turn that coldness because see your inside of the body is warm you put that cold water in it's going to have to muster up some energy which burns fat right so any kind of fat burning whatever i can get to help me out burn a little bit more fat i'm gonna go for it so that's the other reason other than the fact that i like ice cold water but the other reason to drink ice cold water is to help burn you know use up some of that body energy will help burn fat so that's that. Okay, so drinking your water, your cleanse, you exfoliate your face and your lips once a week, once every other week, whatever. However you choose to do it, you tone, use your toner, use your moisturizer formulated for your skin condition. If you're oily, you're going to use something that's mattifying. If you're dry skin, you're going to use a, moisturiz a moisturizing moisturizer. Primer, always use a primer, okay? Once again, something that's formulated for your skin condition. If you're dry, use a moisturizing primer. If you're oily, use a mattifying primer. All right? So, and, and I'll do another thing on, on primers also because you have um, silicone primers and water-based primers, and they're different. But just for a quick note, um, silicone primers work best, work really best with silicone foundation. Water, um, water, um, water-based primers primers work best with water-based. Now, there's some, there are the exceptions to the rule. There are some primers, silicone, that do work well with uh, water-based foundation and vice versa. There's some, you know, so, but just trial and error. But that's just a little rule of thumb. Like I said, there's always exceptions to the rule. So, I hope you all enjoyed this, these little tips. Enjoy. Drink up! Drink that water, baby. Water, baby. Get that water in. More than 20 ounces, okay? Cut your body weight, your real body weight in half, and that's the number of ounces you should be drinking. If you're more than 300 pounds, cut it off at one gallon. Do not drink more than a gallon of water because you do not want to mess up your electrolytes. Have a blessed day, folks. Love y'all. Peace out. Ciao.